guys, what's going on? My name's Akil, and I'm back. Yes, again, I'm so happy and lucky and also glad that I managed to see everything I wanted to see uh, in the whole day so that I can, like, uh, how do you even prepare? I don't know how many other videos I can do. Uh, I still have to do a 4K updated collection, and uh, something I haven't done in a very long time showed my Batman graphic novel collection, and yeah. As I've well both collections have actually increased over the last couple of months actually the last year because if you don't know guys uh, my channel has actually been going on for a whole year so I just want to say thank you for being with me from the start so yeah but anyway uh, let's get on to this review so Ant-Man and the Wasp so this was a film that a lot of people were mixed about, but then all the TV spots were like, oh, it's one of Marvel's best films, a sequel, or one of the best, I mean, Marvel's best sequels, and it's so good, and all type of stuff, yeah. But nothing can beat Infinity War, guys, nothing. But I was really blown away and surprised by this. This was a lot of fun. Yes, there was some slow moments, but it's, again, not a perfect film. I can see the fours, but... I don't know why people hate it guys. I'm sorry to say if you hated it, but I'm against you in this uh, one. And I know a lot of people might hate my Incredibles 2 review for giving that a 7 out of 10. But hey, it is what it is guys. So, I'm just going to say, um, to start off with, Ant-Man and the Wasp was a great movie guys. I really had fun with this. This was a total blast. This is one of, uh, I have to agree with you, uh, one of Marvel's uh, best uh, sequels. In terms of sequel wise, it's not as good as Winter Soldier, okay? Winter Soldier is better than this. Uh, it's better than Iron Man 2, definitely. What else? Thor the Dark World. This is better than Thor the Dark World. So yeah, um, but uh, uh, out of like the second installment in the franchise, uh, Winter Soldier is still my favorite. Uh, yeah, Winter Soldier and then Age of Ultron and then probably this. But it's still it's still a good film. So yeah. Alright, let's talk about the story now. So the story for Ammon of Was is basically, uh, you have Scott Lang who's in house arrest after what happened in Civil War. Uh, two years I believe house arrest, right? Yeah, and uh, I, uh, again, no spoilers for the movie, you haven't seen it, but uh, he has done something that happened in Civil War that made him get into house arrest and yeah, and so him and also the Pims, uh, we're well not really the Pims, yeah, the Pims, uh, Hope Van Dyme and, uh, uh, Hank Pim, uh, sorry guys, I forgot the names of the characters already, this is sad, but yeah, those two, uh, need his help, Scott Lang's help, uh, to, um, get their mother, uh, not their mother, uh, Hope's mother back, and I won't tell you what happens from there on guys, because it's just a blast, the whole movie is a fun ride, it's funny, it's after impacts, uh, Hova kills it as this role, um, Evangeline Willie is great and awesome as Wasp and Hope as well. Michael Douglas, uh, Lawrence Fishman's in this movie, uh, he's pretty good too. The villain, I thought the villain was okay. Uh, it's not like the best Marvel villain. I thought Killmonger was a better villain than, uh, the villain in this movie. Her name is Ghost. Uh, but her powers are really cool. She can do some, uh, crazy stuff. If you've seen the trailer, you probably know what I'm talking about. But there's some interesting stuff. And of course, Air Man's doing his uh, his thing, and Wasp is flying around and all that. It's really cool, and it's a family story, guys. That's why I think this rate is film is uh, a bit more kid friendly, a bit more family friendlier. It's uh, PG rated, and it's got that very like warm and heart. Uh, it's got that sense of like family, and it's very like heartfelt type of story. It's I I. It's not like the other Marvel movies, are not, like dark and gritty and more like intense and brutal and action pack and violent and all that i mean like spider-man homecoming it's a bit like that too but then again uh you got vulture you got iron man that's all that that's different but this movie needs to be uh pg just be, uh, had to be pg just because of the themes it had in it but yeah the story was great i loved it this is a movie the whole family can enjoy so if you haven't seen the first Ant man start there because uh you won't have no idea what happens in this film because it kind of uh, takes some of the characters from the first one, especially Michael Pena's character, Ruiz, right? Yeah, he was great. Very funny. All right, enough of the story. Now let's get on to um, the negatives. I mean, sorry, the positives first. Yeah.
Alright, so first off, uh, like I said, it's a great movie, so straight up, again, action. What do I have to say? The action is freaking phenomenal in this movie. There is some of the best superhero action scenes I've seen for quite some time. Is it, again, better than Infinity War? Absolutely not, no. There is a higher intensity, intensity level and higher stakes in that movie. This movie is a bit more smaller. People might say it's a small movie, like... It's just one part of a larger universe. Yes, that's true. However, uh, well, I wouldn't say that yet. Uh, I'll say that to the end. There is something that I should point out at the end, guys, that you will... Uh, it's something to do with the end credit scene, but I won't tell you what it is. So, I'll tell you at the end of this review. But anyway, uh, back to the positives. The action, the action I said uh, before, uh, just then, it was really good. The ghosts stuff, Ghost Kicking Ass, and man uh, Wasp, and all that type of stuff. Um, next up, the humor. So like I said before, the action was great, I loved it. Alright, next up, now the humor. The humor in this movie, hmm, it was, yes, it was great. I loved it. Um, it was so funny at some point, sometimes I, I, I just couldn't stop laughing. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so, this is so funny. I can now understand why critics are saying that it's one of the funniest Super movies ever. I love the humor in this movie. It is so much more funnier than the first Ant Man. Uh, but I still think uh, Guardians 1 as a standalone film is better with the humor. I mean, alright, to be honest, Ant Man of Wars is better than Guardians 1. Okay, I'm, I'm just putting it straight out there. Ant Man and the Wasp is. Better than Guns of Galaxy, so yeah. Alright, and finally, the effect. I rarely talk about this, but I have to point it out here. I could have said the music, I could have said the acting, but I wanted to say this. The effects was so good. Like, the Quantum Realm stuff, again, no spoilers, was all crazy, and like, wow, it was so, so crazy, and ghosts, ghost powers, and all that was crazy, and all that, but I really, really thought that it was awesome. And I love the effects in this movie. So yeah. All right. Uh, not to do. Uh, without further ado, I'm just gonna get into the negatives. Uh, there's two negatives because it's a great review. That's just how I roll. <laughs> yeah. So the first up, a bit less ants. I know that's gonna be a bit of a pain for a lot of people, but it's called Emma and the Watch for a reason. It's supposed to be a team up duo movie, but this movie is a movie with not as many ants. As I thought there would be. So yeah, um, there was ants, but not as many as I thought there would be. Do you get that, guys? So, yeah, that, and there is a funny scene also in the postcard scene. That it's to do with an ant. I won't just, I won't, okay, I won't say what happens. But yeah, it's, it's funny, okay? The ants are cool, they're awesome, but again, not as many as I thought there would be. Not like the first one, though. The first one, that was, that was straight up full of ants everywhere. All right, and finally, the final, uh, uh, the second out of two negatives is uh, I expected more uh, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer in this movie. They advertise her like, oh, she's gonna come back from the quantum realm. She is, but I won't tell you when she appears in the movie because that's a spoiler. She is key to the plot, so um, she's in the movie, but not as much as I thought uh she would be. Uh, same complaint I had for uh, what's it? Uh, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, barely any gold boom. I this one I'm gonna say uh, expected more Michelle Pfeiffer. I mean, she was in the movie. I'm not gonna say barely any of her, because the reason why I said barely any gold boom for my last review, which was Jurassic World for Kingdom, because he was there for like two scenes. This one she was there for like a bit towards um I, I wouldn't say a bit towards when actually that's spoiled. But I'll just say. I'll just leave it there. I expected more of her to be in the movie. Well, I expected more of her character to be in the movie. Alright, yeah. So that's that. And to sum it all up, guys, my final score for this uh, movie, I'm going to give Ant-Man of Wars an 8 out of 10. This is a very great uh, Marvel film. Not as great as Infinity War. It's on the level Black Panther. I really enjoyed this film. I highly recommend you go see it out. Uh, see, no, not, not see it out. Seek it out. Uh... See this movie in theaters, IMAX, 3D, whatever. It's worth your time, guys. So, yeah. So, there you have it, guys. That's my review for Ant-Man the Wars. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. And, as always, my name is Akil, and I'm signing out. Bye, guys.